welcome to the knitting game and other stuff today is March 20th 2013 and I'm your host Leslie also known as Pixie Knits and that is P-I-X-E K-N-I-T-S it is Pixie there was some confusion last week so it is Pixie I just I needed to get the same Twitter and Ravelry and Plurk name and I had to drop the second I in order to get it so there you have it. That's how I came up with Pixie Knits. If you would like to follow me on Plurk or join our Ravelry group or anything like that, you can visit my show notes and that has all of my information except this week. This show will not have any show notes this week. Um, I didn't do them. I was, um, I've been wonderfully busy at work the last uh, week and a half and it has been amazing. But I've been working some longer hours and it takes away from some of my other things and doing show notes, well, that kind of has to take a back seat. So, no show notes. But if you look at the other show notes, the older ones, it's got links to everything. And I'm really into Instagram lately, um, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, so, there's links to that there too now. English not so good and evening time maybe. So I have no idea what episode this is because there's no show notes. I didn't even think I was going to get to record today so I'm glad that I do have the opportunity to come and visit. Um, so let's jump right into it. We had two new members in our Ravelry group and that is Jennifer J2010 and Scully B and that is Michelle. So um, I'm guessing Jennifer is a girl and um, Michelle is also a, a woman. So ladies, hi. <laughs> and then we have one birthday this week and that is Keith Knits and that is Catherine. So happy birthday. I hope you have a wonderful day coming up and when it's your day. Um, some little announcements, thank yous and shout outs. I want to say thank you to Birdie Knits. Um, she wrapped me the Magrathea this week, which is awesome. Uh, so thank you very much. Some announcements. Tomorrow is the Fredericksburg Sit and Knit at our Barnes & Noble in Central Park. Uh, and I say we, it's um, Courtney, Stitches Please from the Fearless Knitter podcast and I get together every other Thursday. However, Courtney won't be there this week for a wonderful reason. She's getting her wedding dress fitted. So exciting. Very, very exciting stuff for Courtney. So I'll be there if you are in the area and want to stop by. Hey, come on down. We had some, uh, a new uh, member of our little group that came by last time, Beth, um, and she's a doll love her accent so from North Carolina and Asheville area I believe so she is awesome so hopefully we get some folks coming in and the word spreads that would be nice I know a lot of people do their knit nights around here on Thursdays but I think we're the only group that does it every other week and purposefully because every other week we've got stuff going on so um, announcements two things um the fredericksburg area spinners and weavers guild is pre-selling a cookbook that contains recipes from our members and friends of the guild those that are uh also artisans in our guild space area we um we're located at the liberty town arts workshop downtown in fredericksburg and we have this huge studio where folks keep their looms, but there's potters and painters and sculptors and just a whole wide range of artisans at Liberty Town. So we've got folks that are contributing to our cookbook. So if you would like to pre-order a cookbook, all of the information is available on the guild's website, which is fswguild.org. 
So if you go there, you'll find all the information that you want, pre-order forms and informa um, all the information on how to get that to us at the Guild to pre-order your cookbook. Also of note, the if you're in the Washington DC metro area, uh, the yarn shop, local yarn shop, Uniquities up in, oh, I forget. I want to say Herndon, that's not it. Vienna. Up in Vienna at the Vienna Community Center, they're having their eighth Fiber Farmers Market on Saturday, March 23rd from 1 to 5. If you are a spinner, they may still have space available. You can buy in, I think, for $25 and get a space in the spinning circle. I did this last year and it was a hoot. Oh my gosh, I, I actually still have fiber I haven't spun that I bought there. And there's, um, I got some Fred Joyous fiber there and they've got shocked folks there to demonstrate their tools and equipment. So it's, it's a pretty decent sized event and it was very well traveled. There was a lot of folks that, that showed up. So as far as local fiber things, you know, this is a pretty good one. So if you're around and you need something to do on Saturday, maybe think about hitting that up. Um, let's see. I said I was going to talk about something a minute ago, and this is why I need show notes. And I forgot what it was now. And I'm going to kick myself because it was something funny. And I don't remember what it was. So anyway, let's get into it. So this week I've done a lot of knitting. Uh, nothing on knitting game projects. Uh, I haven't you worked on the Sayuri sweater. Didn't work on the shawl, the easy 100th anniversary camping half circle shawl. Didn't work on that at all. But what I have been doing is just having fun this week with my knitting and spinning. I was able to do some spinning this week and it has been a blast. So let's get into the knitting and we'll start off. I have a half object this week. I've got a hoe. So here is the first of two socks, obviously. I had originally called these my Aurora socks, but I changed it to Caribbean Cool because I just think the colors are so very Caribbean. Um, so these are toe up socks and I just knit until I felt like doing a heel and I used a heel where the gusset is on the bottom by Wendy Johnson and I did the bottom gusset and then a heel flap and then I knit until I got up and then I started doing a cuff some ribbing I like three by two ribbing I don't know why it seems to go faster than two by two or three by one or two by one so I like three by two and five is really easy because what I do is on the round where I start the ribbing, I actually, um, I'll knit four, I'll decrease by four stitches. Um, so I go from 64 to 60, 30 on each needle. So the number five with the three knit and the two purl, um, really works out well. So, and they fit amazing. So this one does. So I think last week I was in the ribbing. I probably was very close to finishing this one. I think I was probably almost ready to bind off. So there's the first sock. And then I did cast on the second sock. So I will place a stitch marker here so you guys can see, unless I finish it next week and then Oh, I guess I'll still place a stitch marker so you can see where it was. But I cast on and I'm about halfway done with the foot. Now these are being knit with size one and a half Chow Goo Red Lace Fixed Circular Needles. They're 16 inch. Love the tips, love the cables. Um, I have done Magic Loop before with the Chow Goo Red Lace. And it gets a little tricky. You get ladders on the side sometimes because the cables um, are very, they're stiff. 
you know, they're very, there's not a lot of memory to them. They're just there. And to do the bend, because they're so thick and stiff, it's hard to do um, magic loop with the Chow Goo Red Lace, unless you've got a long, like if you're using like 32s or something, so you can get the two sides pretty close together. So um, with these, doing it on two circulars like this, amazing. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So I think the first one came out pretty good. Um, there may be a little laddering on the side. You can see the stitches probably aren't as tight. There are some loose ones. But I think all in all, especially once I block it, it I don't think it will be that noticeable. And seriously, if somebody is looking at the side of my leg that closely, we've got some other issues than some loose stitches. So, <sighs> you know what I mean. All right, so moving on, I did work a little bit on my um, Vittorio, and I did place a stitch marker where I left off last week. I haven't really worked on it much because I really wanted to start banging out the socks. So that is, I don't know, maybe, well, one, two, three, four, five. I've done six rows since last week. <laughs> exactly. So these are being knit on size 10 and a half. I think, where are they? No, I'm sorry, size six red lace Chagu fixed circular needles. So I do have the interchangeable set. I don't think I'm using any of it right now. Um, but these, the last two projects have been on the fixed circular needles. Then, let's see, I've made progress on my Rocky Coast cardigan. And these I do have on my interchangeable needles. So here we go. I'm, I'm in the middle of a row, so I must apologize. All right, so that stitch marker was where I was last week when I showed the sweater. And I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. I am still doing the raglan increases for the sleeves. Um, and I have a way to go, a ways to go. Um, so I'm in the middle of the row here. Now these are being knit on my Chagu Red Lace Interchangeables. This is 10.5 um, US 6.5 millimeter needles. And I'm doing it so I'm on the size like 32 cable. Yes, because the cable is 22 inches and each of the tips are 5, so that gives me an extra 10. So yes, I'm doing that on a 32 inch cable. I just found a huge hole in my favorite, like, it's almost like a coat, cardi coat. I didn't knit it, it was store bought, but it's gray. So it goes like with all of my work clothes, so I just wear it all the time in the office because our office goes from being sweltering to cold to hot again. And apparently I lean on my elbows a lot at work and I rubbed a hole right there on my elbow. And I, I felt something cold on my elbow today. I'm like, what the heck? And I go and look, I start feeling around and I look and sure enough, there's a big old hole. So I'm going to put my husband's sweater on hold. So the next thing after my Rocky Coast, uh, yeah, after my Rocky Coast, I'm going to have to whip up a quick little gray black sweater so I can wear it to work. All right, so that's all of my knitting. So, and I did say I have been doing some spinning. So I finally took my hand carded uh, art bat. I finished spinning it. I took it off of the bobbin. And this is red and navy blue cordell with like hot pink and purple Tessa silk. 
and some coppery Angelina thrown in. And it's just a thick and thin, chunky art yarn. It's a single, and it's actually about 190 yards. And it comes in, I would think, right about three and a half ounces. I have this currently, if you're interested in it. It is on sale in my Etsy shop. I did $25 because I looked at some of the other um, like art yarns for sale out on Etsy and folks are selling about 100 yards for about 12 bucks. So this is almost 200 yards. Um, so I figured I just, instead of 24, I rounded up to 25. So since I hand carded the bat, I have no idea how much the fiber was when I got it. So if you're interested, it's out there. I had fun with it. So that's all that matters, right? So that's why I do it. it seems awfully dark in here. The time change, right? I think even last week I recorded it was still dark. So it's a little weird with it being kind of like bright out. You guys can see stuff. Oh, and speaking of seeing stuff, you see that right there? Those priority mailboxes? That's some yarn and some bags for the A of Three Club. Yep, I got it in. So uh, we're going to work on packing that stuff up. I'm going to rearrange my room here because I got some shelves this week. So I'm going to have to do that this weekend. And I think we're going hiking on Saturday if the park is open. Just a quick, easy one to start off for the season. But I think it's time. We need to get back to it. Alrighty, so I digress. Um, I finished plying up my Pagewood Farms Merino in the Blueberry Smoothie colorway. And this is a Navajo ply. And I did wash it and I have thwacked it. And as you can see, it is not bad on the balance. And I'd say all in all, it's probably about a DK weight. There are some thicker spots, like that one that's probably close to a worsted. And then I have some thinner areas, you know, like try to find a hot pink one. I don't know. But I thought it came out really pretty. And man, when I first started, it was like doing that coily thing where my single was getting coiled up and then the coils were getting Navajo plied into the yarn and it was just causing me all sorts of fits. I couldn't get my tension right or something was off. So it had set for quite a while, a couple weeks, and then I went back to finish it and ugh, sitting for a little bit of time made, I think, all the difference in the world because it just started coming out just exactly like it should have. So let's see, this one is 336 yards. And like I said, it's probably about a DK weight through and through. I can't, I'm not going to worry about doing it up. But I love it. I love the hot pink. I love the purple. I like this soft mint green. And I don't know what to call the other green. It's a darker, like, teal. Teal is a horrible name for color. Teal can be green. It can be blue. But I don't know what to call it. It's kind of, it's in between the purple and the light mint color. So whatever color that might be. But it smells good. My soak. And then, remember a few weeks ago I bought the Rolags. Well, I spun those up. I grabbed that and I decided, oh, sorry. I decided to spin that up and I just finished the last of the Rolags today. So I don't know if I'm going to do a center pull ball and to ply this, but this is what I came out with. So I don't know if you can see, there's browns, golds, greens, and you've got this purple. And there's dark purple and light purple. And the colorway was called like Woodstock. So there's, oh yeah, I got some 
really tightly spun stuff. There's locks in here, so I've got like locks, fuzzy locks coming out all over the place. So this stuff, it was such a fun thing to spin, except there was so much sparkle in parts of the roll logs, like when you got to one of the ends, you either started with it or you ended with it. There was so much of this Angelina Firestart in it that I had to wear an extra t-shirt over what, just because I would, it would just get all over me. So I had to wear extra. So that is all I have this week, and I know I'm missing something because I don't have the show notes. Um, yeah, I don't know. So hopefully you enjoyed a little quick update. This is, it's not really a real show. I'm not all organized like usual. It's just, it is what it is. Um, so that's about it. Um, I don't really have any plans to do another knitting game anytime soon. I don't really, I need to catch, like I, I was trying to knit to zero, so I need to get some things off the needles, because I might not get all the way down to zero, but I think I'll get pretty close. So I just, I need to get the shawl off the needles and block. I need to get the Vittorio and the socks, because I have several other socks that are on the needles that I don't ever talk about, because there's other socks I want to cast on. And there's the sweater that I need to knit for myself because I've got the hole in my elbow. That's all I have. So uh, thanks for stopping by and um, have a great week. Bye. Okay, so I know I said I'd tell you why I was really into Instagram and I kept forgetting why. And then I started to do the edit on the podcast and now I remember why I'm so into Instagram lately. Um, I have decided that I'm going to make a very conscious effort and catalog my yarn and fiber as it comes into the house rather than sticking it into one of my bins and just letting it languish there. So what I've been doing is I've been using my phone and Instagram to take the photos of my yarn and fiber. And those of you that follow me on Instagram have noticed a barrage of yarn and fiber photos lately, and that is why. So. The reason why I love Instagram lately is because it takes the perfect sized picture to put on your Ravelry and the stash pages. So that is what I wanted to share with you guys. So thank you for joining me this week and I will see you next week. Bye. 